the question box, you will get a copy of today's recording. So you can slow me down, speed me up, review it any which way you need to. All right, so let's go and get started. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how you can get your local business on Google Search and Maps, okay? So that is what we're talking about, making sure that your business, no matter the size, is visible to people when they search and when they look. We do know the majority of people go to Google first when they're searching for something. Now, again, if you need closed caption, this is the URL that you go to, so you'd bring up another tab. If you'd like to know everything that we train about, then you can go to this URL. You can find out more information and request special classes to have me come back anything that you need from the Google partner that invited you. Of course, this is me. And if you are tweeting or posting, if you'll use this hashtag grow with Google, it lets the Google team know that this matters to you and it encourages them to create more free training, which I love. But then also, if you wanna tag me, this is me on Twitter and this is me on Instagram, I'm happy to retweet you, repost you. As the founder of Brand Chat, one of the top 10 Twitter chats in the world, so I'm happy to tweet you out to my 16,000 followers. Happy to do that any given day as long as you tag me in there, okay? And I'd love to see what you learn and what you're shouting out and what aha moments that you're having as you're learning, all right? Now today we're going to be talking about what is a Google Business Profile. Would you let me know in the question box for those who are using the question box and remember you'll get a copy of today's recording if you're using the question box. Let me know if you have a Google Business Profile already. It will let me know how fast or slow to go through that portion. Then I'll talk about how to create a Google, Google Business Profile. Remember, it used to be called Google My Business. Some people call it Google Listing. The actual name is Google Business Profile, okay? So I've got half and half. Some say yes, not yet, yes. All right, perfect, perfect. Hello, Julie, I see you here, perfect. All right, no, no, I'm, there's more leaning to the no. For those of you that said yes, then it'll be a quick overview to be sure that you have everything in place, that you're not missing an important component that can help increase your visibility, okay? So I wanna make sure you have that functions here. Not yet in the USA, exactly, Pedro, right? It won't show up yet, depending on the country. There are some countries that have it, some still do not, okay? How to manage the business info, so I'll spend some time on optimizing that. There's actually an advanced um, webinar that I do about how to really optimize that, and I'm happy to come back and do that once you have an opportunity to use this. How many of you, by a show of one for yes, two for no, how many of you are posting on your Google business profile? How many of you post on your Google business profile? One for yes, you do, two don't. No, you don't. Okay, I see some no's in there, quite a few no's. And then of course, as I end up everything, I'll talk about free resources and tools you have available to you. Everything that I'm talking about today is 100% free, all right? There are people who may call you to say that you need to not lose your Google listing. Do know that that is not true. The Google business profile is 100% free. You can pay for somebody to manage it, to do the videos, to upload the photos, do whatever you need with it to manage and respond to your reviews, but this is 100% free, okay? All right. Oh yes, absolutely, Bill. Absolutely, I will. Thank you, Bill, for doing this and being one of our great Google partners. Your hubby does, I understand that. All right, so let's make sure you're using it to the best of your ability that you need to. And if you need closed captions, remember, I've got that URL at the bottom of every slide here. Now I'm gonna introduce you to Vince and I'm about to do something really dangerous, which means I'm gonna change audio format. For some of you, if you lose audio, that means you've got to switch to the different, you're either on phone audio or computer audio. If you'll give me the grace, if you don't wanna hear the video, don't worry about it, I'll come back on. But do know that I'm gonna show that real quick. Let's meet Vince here, okay? go and see him. He's with Village Taylor and I love his story. My name is Vince. This is my shop. I opened Village Taylor and Cleaners in 1977. I arrived in New York four years earlier from Italy. It was me, my brother, my mom and my dad. My mother taught me how to sew. When I opened the shop, the first person I hired was my mother. This is Bruno, the store mascot. My little advertisement. As a business owner, you're always thinking, how can you do better? I noticed that customers come in with the clothes in one hand and the phone on the other, always looking up information. So I said to myself, we have to put this store online. 
Google lets me decide how the shop shows up. I pick photos. I can post special hours. Anything. I made this website in 10 minutes using the website builder. And I'm not kidding. Now people walk in and I'm always asking, how did you find us? They used to say, I saw Bruno, so I came in. Now they say, Google. Believe it or not, we're up 30% this year. We're doing enough business, I had to hire more tailors and get some new machines. I've got three shops going, and my son Vincent Jr. is running one of them, the village cobbler next door. I'm in an old-fashioned profession, I work with my hands. I hadn't thought much about putting the business online. Now, I couldn't be happier. Village tailor, 40 years and going strong. All right. All right, I had some questions during that, so let me answer some of these questions before we go further. Uh, let me, there we go, I'm back on camera now. Can everybody see in here? Would you let me know and confirm in the question box? So to answer questions, let me see. Um, yes, you will get a copy of the recording if you comment in the question box. That's the only way you'll get a comment. You'll get a copy of today's recording. So do make a comment there. It's important for you to find that question box. Um, have the links to find me, absolutely. And let me go back to those. This is how you can find me. I'm on Twitter here, the first handle. The second one is myself on Instagram. Feel free to find me there or just Google me. Google me, you'll find me on all sorts of socials. I'm on every social there is, Anne. Let me see. Um, uh, you will get a recording of the presentation and the slides if you comment in the question box, all right? Um, so make sure you do comment in the question box. Hello, Catherine, I do see your comment there. All right, everybody. Absolutely, just commenting is all you need. It will be sent to the email address that you registered with, okay? All right, you're very welcome. So let's talk about what is a Google Business Profile. For those who didn't know or don't have one, because I noticed that the majority don't have one. For those of you who do, bear with me for a moment because you might need to double check that you've used all the functions available to you because you need to use them all to be visible in Google Search and Maps. So when you're looking at it on a mobile device, which we know 74%, 74%, try to say that too fast, um, actually look to mobile first when they want to know, go do or buy. They don't even look at desktop. When I'm working with website designers and I'm telling them if they have limited resources, what they need to spend it on, it's on mobile first. Forget about desktop till later. Do mobile first because that's what people are doing first, all right? So you see here, you can put your photos here, your quick links, your location. If you want people to find your location, do not believe the myth that home-based businesses cannot have a Google business profile. They absolutely can. You just need to suppress your address. I'll teach you how to do that in just a moment. You're absolutely welcome, Maxwell. You're absolutely welcome. All right. Then, of course, your hours of operation and your phone number. So let's dive in deeper because, you know, Everything changed in March 2020 for the business environment. And a lot of people believe that small businesses shut down, especially if they can't find you online. It is where we go first, all right? We have an expectation that if you are in business, you have an online presence. If you've been fortunate not to have to do that and still have a good stream of business, just know that that's where everything is still trending upward and that's not going to change. I mean, think about it even with your kiddos. I've got a two-year-old niece who can make her way around my phone faster than I can make my way right so just think about that and then also know that when people are finding you on maps their behavior is just a little bit different you know taylor i think you were saying that you have an independent bookstore so if you see somebody googling you on a map within the next 48 to 72 hours they have plans to be there or they're looking for inventory because a lot of times when we're shopping local shops we look to see who has the inventory locally or who carries that brand, and that's who we decide to go business with, do business with. People are doing a little bit more shopping now than just online, so do know they're getting out, and I know, especially here in the South, this is something that we've been doing for quite a long time compared to the rest of the states, so just do know that, yes, people are reaching out, they're looking, but they want to not waste their time and see if somebody has things in inventory. And it's important, as every Google business profile does, it does actually condense it responses responds sorry I try to say that too fast it responds to any size device that it's on which is really important let me give you a little hint if you have a website that's not mobile friendly and mobile responsive you will if it's not that you will not ever show up 
in the first page of an organic Google search. Google actually penalizes if you don't have a mobile responsive site or you don't have a secure site. That means that you don't have the HTTPS. So you could be amazing at the content you're putting out there. And when I say content, it is photos, text, and video that you put on your site. But if you don't have a secure site and if it's not mobile responsive, you will have a really hard time getting to the first page of Google search. And it's important that you're on the first page because people don't look past the first page. Know that on average, most people won't look past the first 30 searches of an organic Google search. So every organic search page result gives you 10 organic search, page, search results there. Most people won't look past page 10, page one, because they're, you know, it's just where we look, we're that busy. We can see other opportunities. We consider people who show up in the first page of search experts at what they do. And doesn't don't we want to do business with someone who's an expert at what they do, right? So think about that. Are you showing up in the first page of Google search? There's a joke that says, if you don't show up in the first page, I mean, that's the, where do you, where do you um, actually bury a dead body? You bury them on the second or third page of Google because that's where no one looks. And it's true, it's true. People don't look past the first page unless they're hunting you down specifically. But if they don't know that you exist or they don't even know that there's a product or service that can serve them, you've got to show up in the first page. One of the things that can help you get there is your profile. So this is how to get started. If you are using your device on Search Your Maps and you are looking and find your business there, then go ahead and claim it because you could be there because somebody gave you a great review or perhaps it was an employee who put you on there. It could also be somebody who made a mistake and tagged that they were checking in at a location. It could also be a disgruntled employee and it could be a competitor. And don't you wanna be in charge of your first impression online because first impressions are still lasting. It takes 56, five, six other contact times to change a first impression. That's not 56 tweets, posts, minutes at all. That's 56 other contact times. And we are too busy as business owners doing what we need to do to be able to have to redo that work and put those kind of obstacles in our way. Get your first impression right and own your Google business profile online because we know people search there first. So how to create a profile? Oh, you're only seeing, uh-oh, hold on. Yep, yep, thank you, Lakita. It is supposed to be showing you my screen. How terrible for that. Let me go back to that. Oh, Lakita, thank you so much. All right, so Anne, did you see my links that I showed you earlier? Because I did that after the, the video. Sorry about that. I thought it switched, but it did not take my, um, didn't take my click. All right, there it is. There is Maria Duran on Twitter, Maria Lena Duran, which is actually my full formal full first name right there on Instagram. Okay, perfect. All right. All right, let's go through now about the Google business profile, what it looks like, we know that people go there first. We know that on maps, they go a little bit differently. We know it looks good on all devices. Thank you, Laquita. Thank you so much for saying so. Um, awesome. Melissa, did you see those now? So I hopefully you saw those. Thank you for mentioning that. See, everybody, that's why the question box is important. Let's talk about creating a profile. If you don't have one, go here. For those of that you that do, stay with me a moment because I'm going to make sure that you've optimized and used all the functions, okay? So you'll go here now. You do need to be logged into your free Google account. If you've got a Gmail account, you're golden, you're ready to go. Just go to this URL that I showed you right here, refresh your screen, it will remember your credentials and you're in. If that's the Google account that you want to set up your Google business profile. The good thing with Google is it's easy to get a free Google account, free Gmail or free personal Google account, easy to get. But it's also easy to forget which one you have because people have several of them. All right, so if you'll go into your Google account, you can log in there. If you don't have a Google account or a Gmail account, not to worry, you don't have to have a Gmail account, keep your email address, but go here to this sign up URL and I'll get out of the way so you can screenshot that. But if you want to get one, then all you need to do to use all these free tools is set that up, use your current email address. It does not change it to Gmail, create a password, and like any other password protected site online, you'll use this to log in. OK, I will get my little laser pointer here out of the way so you can screenshot that because you are going to get a copy of the webinar. So the recording as well as a copy of today's slides if you've commented in the question box and only if you've commented. But you might want to work on this quickly because you won't get those copies for 24 hours just because it takes that long for all of this to render. Now, when you go in to put your business name in, you see that right here. 
when you start typing, it will bring up every business in the United States that has that name. Choose the one that is your location, okay? Oh, <laughs> you're very welcome. You're very welcome, Vincent. Love that. And then also, as you're building your profile, look at your business name. Now, go with your proper business name right now. You can change it to the one everybody knows. You know, it's the dry, the dry cleaner on 5th and 3rd. You know, it could be that or 5th and Elm. Um, but right now, put your proper name because if you have to go through more of a validation process than just the postcard that you'll receive, then they'll look for things like your utility bill or your bank statement, and you do want these to match, okay? And then you're going to choose a business category. Now understand there are over 3,000 business categories. You're going to choose the one that's closest to you because not every business category quite gets how unique you are, but do know that once you verify your Google business profile, you now have nine subcategories that you can add, and I highly recommend you add your subcategories that really showcase what makes you so very unique, okay? Now, here's what I mentioned earlier about if you have a home-based business, right? Or if you have a business that's by appointment only, or maybe you're a carpet installer and you have a warehouse, so it's not really something that's public facing or that you want your customers to shop. So maybe you don't want them to come to your location. If you do, you say yes right here. But if not, you say no, that you deliver your products and services to your customer's location. If you're a carpet installer, if you're by appointment and you meet your customers at their home, or you meet them at a coffee shop or at the chamber office, wherever you meet them, then you can say no. But let's say you're a home-based business and maybe you deliver things they order online from your site. That's okay. There are sometimes though, especially in local communities, where you might bring it to your kiddo's school, where you go do yoga, your actual college, maybe you bring it to the dry cleaner or when you're out at a restaurant, the coffee shop, or maybe to church, wherever you gather, you may bring actual product and deliver it to them or even leave it at your front mailbox, but you don't want people just showing up randomly at your home doorstep, you can click no because you do deliver goods and services to your customer's location, okay? So this is how you can use the profile without exposing your actual physical address and you don't have to worry about somebody showing up at your home. Now, after all that happens, right, now you're asked your address. So now here's where people are wondering, why did they ask this? Because Google only can verify that you're the business owner by sending a postcard. That's the predominant way Google will verify. And it looks nothing like a postcard. It looks like a W-2 with perforations on the end and the top. And so do know that a lot of people throw it away looking as an ad, and it's not an ad. That's what it looks like. So be on the lookout for it. You will need to put an actual physical mailing address here. This is not a PO box. PO boxes do not work. Okay. Now, let me give you a little hint. If you are a real estate agent, so you've got the broker already claimed the location, a dentist, a doctor, or the main administration or the clinic may have claimed the location, not to worry. You can put still that address there. You're not going to challenge them to try to claim it. You're going to put the address, but now you're at suite 100, and then maybe another real estate agent's at suite 200, suite 300. Business incubators, this is the same way you handle this too. Okay. So it's still a mailing address, a physical mailing address but now your suites within this one location, especially if the broker, clinic, or someone else has claimed the building in their own Google business profile. Will this recording get sent out to those who registered? No, only to those who commented, Dana. Only to those who made a comment in the question box, so you're solid there. And remember, it's 24 hours later that you'll get that. Now, once you've done this, whether you're showing your address or not, you can put in your service area. You can add in 20 different cities, so the different zip codes, different counties right here to show the area that you're ser you serve. But here's where I do want you to be cautious. Remember that Google Business Profile Superpower is local. Once you go past 100 miles out, you start putting communities 100 miles out, you seriously dilute the effectiveness of this tool and you don't show up which wastes your time of why you even did this. Think hyper-locally, think focus locally. In fact, I work with a lot of franchises and this is what we do. We look really, really locally, even though they may serve 100 or 150 miles out. I live in rural West Texas. I'm in Midland, Texas, and it's nothing for us to head down to San Angelo 110 miles to have lunch or to make a chamber luncheon and to drive 110 miles back. That's just a day 
and West Texas, but 110 miles is a lot of area to cover for the Google business profile. It's hyper local focused and that's where it really excels. There are other tools if you wanna reach people in a wider location area, but for geography, stay within 100 miles. I even work with people and keep them within 25 to 30 miles. So they're showing up all the time because sometimes that repeated Repetitive visibility gets them the business that they need, okay? But here it is. Remember, it's the nail it before you scale it. I understand if you serve nationwide, but here's the thing. Locally, you can reach out to your local daycare, where your kids go to school, your yoga instructor, where you go to the library at, your bookstore. Who is your barista? You can all reach out to them and say, hey, I need some help. Would you mind leaving me a great review? We did business together. I'd love your thoughts. You can ask that personally with some people that you have more connection with. And it's better to do that because when you go to the national stage, you have to have at minimum 60 gold stars, five star gold stars behind your name and your profile for any of that to be showed up in Google's first page of search. So to do a national, for you to be able to compete nationally, you have to have that. That's why I say the nail it before you scale it. Get that done now before trying to do everything. Because if you try to do everything, we just don't have the cash flow as small businesses, right? We don't have that and you need a lot of cash flow to try to reach the entire world. So now we enter our business contact information. If you've got a phone number, if you've got a website, go ahead and put that there. If you don't have a website, not to worry. Let me give you a little hint too. Google does not promote this, but there is a free website that you get with your Google business profile. I'm a big fan of using this as I am a big fan of Google business profile, because if you can dominate the first page of an organic Google search, like first it's your website, it's your Google business profile hanging out there also showing, it's maybe a blog post that you have, and then it's your free website through the Google business profile. All of that is about you, then people see you as the expert. Now, people will ask me, Maria, does that compete with what I'm doing with my website? Does that compete with my search engine optimization? So that's SEO. And that does not because they all need to link and point back to your website, right? And in the race to get visibility from people and to get their attention, I would much rather have two or three horses in the race than to just try to get it with one website. I would much rather get more visibility because I know that's the name of the game. You have to be visible first before you can be valid and valuable. That's why I carry that in the back behind me. Visible is number one. If people don't know you exist, they cannot do business with you. So again, check everything here. More than likely, it's not gonna be phone call. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to send you a postcard by mail, put your contact name in there, just in case you forget that it's coming your way or somebody else is looking at the mail and they think it's an ad, and now you can make sure and get it. So you're gonna click mail, double check your work. Here's another place where people make lots of mistakes. They will want to say that they want the postcard, so they want it mailed to them. But what happens is, then they look at it and they realize, oh, I made a typo here. I spelled New York with an A. I hit the wrong um, letter. So they try to change it before they verify that they're the owner. Understand this causes a terrible verification loop. And now you're not going to see that postcard for a long, long time. And you may have to start the process at the very beginning because you're trying to make a change on something that you've not verified that you're an owner. Verify first. Be hands off till you verify it. Then make changes once we know that you're the owner. Okay, so I've got some questions here. What if a customer is by appointment and they need to set up appointments to come in? So what you can do, depending on the category that you select, Melissa, is you can do bookings directly from your Google business profile. And that is really a great way to gain a lot of business because people want less clicks. They don't want to do as hard work that they need to to be able to do business. And you, as the business professional, want to make it easy for people to buy from you. So you would link your bookings here, but that's available only for certain categories, depending on the main category. Remember what I told you about claiming that first, and then you can choose nine other subcategories after that to help really show the uniqueness of your business. Let's see. Um, so do we need to create a business profile for each area outside of each? Julie, if you are doing business in all those areas, like the franchisees I work with, they have you know people, they don't have a structure because they're all home-based, but they have people in different areas, like let's say skincare consultants that are representing a major brand that may have headquarters, but they're the local consultant. There may be 12 or 14 or 40 of them locally, and they each manage their own area, okay? I'm trying to improve our search engine, so our SEO. I've heard that Google ranks businesses higher that show a photo of their office entrance to help substantiate a physical location. Actually, Kenyon, yes and no. Google 
ranks that higher, but it also ranks better if you connect all your other tools. So you've got a Google business profile, your Google business profile, once this is in place, I would make sure you connected um, your Google Analytics to your website and connect these two together, then connect Google Search Console, and everything that I'm talking about is free, by the way. Google Search Console, connect that. Also then connect, if you are selling products online, Google Merchant Center, because you can use that for free. Yes, you can use it for ads, but you, there's also a pre, free function, and then also, um, Google um, Ads. Even though you that's paid, you're not going to put any credit card in. Just connect everything together because those are all Google tools. And when Google tools are all connected together, they now verify the information is correct. They're pinging each other. And the thing is, is Google became the number one search engine in the world because the information that people are searching for is correct. And the reason Google can stay correct is because they go straight to the business owners to find out the info and then use all these tools to confirm. There are many businesses that only have one thing, so they don't show up as high because they don't confirm as high. You've got to link everything together, get good reviews. Now that starts working, that stacks together and working through your SEO. Does that make sense, Kenyon? All right, can I use a PO box? No, Tricia, you cannot to set that up. So what I've seen people do, in fact, I had a community theater do this. Um, Tricia is, what they did is they used their, the executive director used his actual home address. He had a theater, I mean, a real physical theater, but their mailing didn't come there, it came to a PO box. So he used his home address, claimed it verified, and then changed the address to the actual location so people can physically find it on the map because they want to go to their plays, they want to do auditions. So that's what he did to be able to get around the PO box. But you cannot use a PO box. So that does answer that. Is the company has if the company has offices in different countries, do I need a Google business profile to get per office? Um, in different countries or different counties. So yes, you do if it has offices at different places. Remember what I said, the superpower of the Google business profile is local, local, local. So the closer you can get to the area that you serve, the better. All right. Um, we have two product lines. Um, one is B2B and the other is B2C. Do I have to create two business profiles or can handle both in one? You can still handle both in one. Yeah, it doesn't have to be separate at all. Uh, counties, yes, you can, serve, you can serve up to 20 different counties, but remember not to fall into the temptation of trying to be everywhere at, you know, for everyone because that will not work. I always say when you try to reach everybody, anybody and somebody, you usually get their second cousin, nobody. It is too much and it overwhelms this particular tool, okay? So now we can continue on. Oh, U.S. and Mexico. So, yes, start with U.S. because I'm not sure if Google Business Profile is available in Mexico. I think Pedro said it wasn't yet. And it is rolling out across all the countries, uh, but I don't know when it will roll out yet because it depends on different regions. So you might want to check your region, okay, or check with the Google Business Pro, the Google partner that invited you. Now you can add your services, all right? While you're waiting for your postcard, it does allow you to add services. This will not be visible until we've verified you're the owner. So now add your services and think custom. You know, you can put here custom services. So don't just go with what's with the category. Really think about what you provide. Most of the time I have to customize and put in services specifically for each of the businesses that we work with. You can also add your business hours. This is really important to do because people don't want to drive up and see that you're open on Google, but you're closed when they get there because they're not mad at Google when they get there. They're mad at you. And that's part of your first impression. If you want to accept messages, you also make that decision here. Accepting messages means that you can receive text through your Google business profile. You're actually going to get it to your mobile phone. It does not expose your cell phone number, but it does give them the opportunity to connect with you. And you can give access to other people at your office or your store or your shop or your restaurant, and then they can respond right away. Remember what I said about sometimes timing is just everything. And the person that responds is the one who earns the business. You can now add your business description. This is really important, and I'd like for you to think for a moment how people search for you. A lot of times, we as professionals get so embedded in our industry lingo that we don't use words that people search with, and we don't understand that. Talk to people. Find out from your best customers. How did they find you? If you don't have customers yet, talk to friends and family who are customers of your potential competitors. How did they search for information? Even those of you who open restaurants, understand disposable income means that they're spending on a restaurant, means they do other forms of entertainment because sometimes eating is seen as an entertainment. So they're also going to movies or potentially to bookstores. Or So how are they searching for all of those things? 
know the words that they're using so you can populate the 750 characters here with words that match because the first part of Google's algorithm and how it determines what shows up first in an organic search is relevancy. How well do you match what the person is searching for? And you have to use their words. Even if you're, they're using a voice search, hey Google, hey Alexa, you want to use the words that they're using. So think for a moment, if somebody knows your name but they don't know how to find you, how are they searching for you? What do they do? And if they don't know your name, but they know there's a product or service that can serve them, do they go like to their Facebook feed and say, hey, somebody I need, somebody who can help me straighten my child's teeth? They don't look for an orthodontic surgeon, do they? They don't see it look for, we're experts at orthodontics. So I don't know why you would put that even here in your description if we're knowing that relevancy is the first thing you need to do be to be valid and visible to people when they're searching or else Google will not serve up your information because you don't match. So, and if they don't know you exist, but and they don't know there's a product or service or solution for them, what are they searching for? What's the pain points? What are they re really looking for? Read your reviews to find out what they were looking for when they found you. If you don't have reviews yet, read your competitor's reviews. Find out how they found your competitor. Find out also what's missing from your competitor. It's great competitive market research for you to read your competitor's reviews. You can now add photos. We're a real visual society. Hey, TikTok is like that, right? Everybody's using TikTok. You can be in there for hours and lose a day. Know that you can add photos and videos here too. Now, here's the thing. Don't just create on your own repurpose don't so don't worry about just creating curate you can use what you're posting on social and it fits really really nicely here we'll talk about that more in a moment and then now of course you can advertise we're not going to talk about that we do a whole other webinar in how you can get the basics down and how you can be seen in Google Ads that'll save that for another webinar but once you get the verification code you're good now you're going to enter that in right here once you do that now you can manage your business info right any questions before we go to the next part where I'm really going to be talking about how you can optimize what you're doing on your Google business profile. All right. Perfect. Karina. All right. Any questions? Use that question box, everybody. All right. So let's talk about this. When you are in Google search, you will see now that if you are logged into the Google account, so Gmail, the free personal Gmail or the free Google account that you use to set up your profile, you now have in Google search the opportunity to do that right there. The Google business profile app is going away. We are going to see all of this now happening in Google Maps. So just keep that in mind. That's coming around the corner. Now on search, you can do all of this, edit the information that we were just talking about here. So it's all of these areas. So now you can use that real world word name. Now you can put the nine other subcategories that really help you focus and talk about what makes you so very unique. And you can review your description to make sure it's aligned with people when they need your product, service, or solution. Now, you can add up to three phone numbers and think about that. If you're in a webinar like today or you're taking care of your customer, it's really tough for us to be butcher baker and candlestick maker in our business. You might wanna bring somebody else in to be able to manage it. So you can put up to three phone numbers there so they will reach somebody when they reach out and they can help you with that as well as put your website if you didn't already do that. Now, if you want people to come to your location, this is now where you have a chance to move the pin. Maybe it's not showing up the right place. A lot of times pins may not show up exactly where they need to be, especially in rural West Texas, New Mexico and Oklahoma, you'll see those pins go all over the place. You can drag it here and put it exactly where it needs to be. But do know that it takes anywhere from 30 to 90 days for this to be confirmed and to show up on your profile. Here's why. Google sends the satellites over. Whenever anybody sends these, the satellites are rotating through and around the world. And what happens is they need to verify this by satellite. If it's dusty, I live in dusty West Texas, La Mesa is blowing by and now they can't see anything or a cloudy day and the satellite can't see anything, we have to wait for the next pass. Once it's passed and they can confirm that there is a location there, then it will show visibly on the map. So do know it can be 30 to 90 days. If the satellite can't capture it, they'll send the Google car out. But again, that could take 30 to 90 days. All right, now business hours. Remember what I said about getting those business hours right? And you can put special hours, brunch, senior hours, delivery hours, curbside delivery. So all of that you can add 
any information you can give to people and empower them that gives them the opportunity to do more business with you and to be solid about the decision they make in doing business with you. So you can add more attributes now, not just from the search, but you have to go to the dashboard. That's the back end or the back office of Google Business Profile. And you can add other things like if you want to put that you're women led or veteran led, you know, Vincent, you can put all of that in there when you're doing and you're, you're using the dashboard, which you get to the dashboard by going to this URL. All right. Now you can add your products, add your products, everybody, the Google business profile sits really nice in Google Maps right there front and center. When people are looking in maps, it shows up really nicely here, it takes lots of good visual real estate. But on a desktop or laptop on that right hand side, the more as you put products, it lengthens it. And as it lengthens it, you gain more visual real estate. Know that a lot of people pay a lot in Google ads just to use what's known as extensions to really lengthen out an ad, which gets you the visibility that you already get for free in your Google business profile. All right. So make sure you do that. How are we doing all of this on our phone? Ah, oh, we're doing this because some people, Jan, I mean, not me, I'm not some people, but some people are really good at doing this. So you can do it on your phone by just going to Google search. As long as you're logged into your Google, your free Gmail account or your free Google account on your phone. So on my phone, I think I'm logged into eight different Google accounts. So I do need to switch between Google accounts to make sure the right profile is coming up, okay? And Carrie, I didn't receive the postcard for four months on my other business. How do I avoid this again? All right, Carrie, sometimes that does happen and it depends on when you requested the postcard. Do know that Google was entirely 100% remote in March, 2020. And during that time, I mean, it was everything to, for people. Sometimes, I mean, four months was good. <laughs> Normally it was taking nine to 10 months for people to get a postcard. So right now I know, and I've seen it in five days, I've started a lot of businesses. I've been setting up their Google business profile and even three days. I've seen it come that quickly. Okay. Just make sure you're not using a PO box. It was March 2020 when the whole world changed. That's when everything happened because everybody like went home in a day. I was in an airplane on March 17th. I remember because it was um, St. Patty's Day. It was Southwest. It was full. We were all laughing. And the next day, everybody was at home. Right. So it happened that quickly. Um, so services, you can add services. Remember, you can add custom services too. So you can put your own services in if it doesn't show up there that what you need for your categories. You can also drop and drag photos here, makes it really nice. Keep those photos really a good visual of your brand. Now you are going to get photos from customers when they want to post because they want to showcase they've been at your location. That is okay for customers to do that. But the way you want to dominate it is by putting more photos up there. You don't want to delete customer photos because we love UGC, user generated content. It's more credible and it gives a good third party validation. But you may be like a location, I was working with a hotel and they did not want the knobby knees to be at the top of their Google business profile. So I encourage them to put more photos in because the more photos in, the more they actually control their business profile, visible branding. So make sure your photos again, look really, really good. Take a good look at this because this is a visual that speaks volume of first impressions and everything, right? Words, uh, pictures are worth a thousand words. And then also keep in mind, you can add videos too. I will use videos that I use in Instagram stories and reels here as well, because they, they go really nicely and it's something I don't have to recreate, right? All right, so I uploaded my products, but Google required me to open a Google merchant account. Okay, so if it, uh, it required you to do that, don't worry, do that, open it, because there's no cost to a Google Merchant account. And if you have a Google Merchant account, then now you can be seen for free in Google Images, in Google Shopping Tab, so that's not Shopping Ads, that's Shopping Tab, T-A-B, and Google Lens too, which is great visibility. So I open merchant accounts all the time. You don't have to have any payment form there. There is nothing that you have to pay unless you wanna do the ads. So absolutely do that. What are the reasons why you don't get approved? Oh, you don't get approved if you don't, um, if you're just 100% online, you don't even, you wouldn't even go stop at church and say, deliver this, this foundation to somebody. Then um, if you say that you're 100% online, you're not going to be able to get a Google business profile. That's why I always think to tell, tell people, think about what you do locally and think of your behavior there. Um, if you have a PO box, you're not going to get approved. Um, if um, certain industries, certain businesses don't get approved either. Um, because there's more of a verification process just to make sure that it's a legit business. Um, but those are some of the most common ones. The most common ones that I see are PO Box. Okay. Now you can do this. You see this actually happening here. This is what Jan people are seeing on the phone too. They can do and look at their performance and measure. And it's important for you to measure your marketing because if you don't measure 
measure, you're not marketing. $1 or one minute spent that's not lifting the bottom line or bringing you closer to your goal is $1 or one minute spent too much. Okay, so you can look at your profile to see how many people are actually calling. I work with several businesses and I explain to them, you can see that your calls are really coming in. The volume of your calls comes in at 2.30 or 3 o'clock when you're picking up your calls. So you really want to have some sort of business system in place where those phone calls are being picked up because, yes, it's great that they're calling and they're leaving a message, but more than likely, we're very immediate people. They've gone down to talk to somebody else and they may already have secured business or spent money with them by the time you've picked, you've done you know, you're, you're done doing the, the pickup round or um, going and doing extracurriculars, right? You can see bookings, you can see who looked for directions. That can help you with your planning. We do have an entire webinar that talks about how you can use business analytics to make better dis business decisions. So you may want to request your Google partner to do that because we really talk about how you can read the data and be able to apply that to good business. Now you can also do updates. I saw a lot of people do not do updates, right? So here's the thing, if you don't do updates, you're not as visible as you need to be. Offers that you have are good and visible on Google Search and Maps until the offer actually expires. So if you have an offer that ends on April 30th, then it will show up till April 30th, right? But if you have an event that shows up, like let's say today, Bill, that you wanted to show this webinar as an event, then it would be visible on Google Search and Maps till today, the event actually happens. So that's what's unique to these two, but updates, Updates, so that's the what's new that you get to talk about in your business profile, that only stays visible for five days. That's it. So if you're not posting every five days, you are not using or maximizing the visibility that you have available through your Google business profile. All right, so you can add updates like this. You can add call to action buttons that take them to your website. <clears throat> in fact, I encourage you to not make a mistake, which is a lot of people will take them to the home page of their website when they do updates like this. That's a mistake. It's the number one reason why people bounce off of your website. Because if you are showing these, maybe you, you want to show a little bit of a history of who Bruno is. If you don't take them directly to the page that shows that on your website, they will leave. And it also goes against your credibility. You want to take people who take people where you told them you're going to take them. It's the same thing with your social post. If you're on social and you say, hey, come here, look at this great tomato recipe, and you take them to the front page because you're too excited, you got people's visibility, and now you want to show them all your stuff, they will leave. That's a great way to absolutely break down rapport. You want to build rapport because when you build rapport like that and it starts building trust, people lean in a little bit more to listen to your messaging and consume what you have. Um, but, but what if I don't want the address visible? All right, Olayanka, I talked about that earlier, how you can suppress your address. So do make sure you review a copy of this actual webinar or stay to the end and I'll show you how to do that because I do want to be respectful of people's time and we did go quite into detail about that earlier, okay? All right, so these are the updates here, but I will ha be happy to help you, okay? So yeah, just stay to the end, I'm happy to show you. All right, so we have updates, remember, five days. That's all that they're visible, so keep that in mind that you're posting every five days at least. That should be your posting structure. Do understand that only 26% of businesses have a Google business profile posting strategy. If you wanna lift yourself head and shoulders above everybody else, have a posting strategy. Now, also within your business profile, you have the opportunity to manage reviews and messages. So for reviews, know that if you spend any time in business, you're going to get a negative review. There are trolls out there. Just go ahead. Do not pay attention to those. But a real negative review, this is how you respond to it. And I want you to really think about this and craft something that works for your way of speaking and your brand voice. But this is what I say. If it's a negative review, I say, that's not the experience we want for you. I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Would you please contact me here? Then I put either a the phone to text, a link to a contact form, an email address, the phone to call, a link to Facebook Messenger, to WhatsApp, whatever I want to do for them to communicate, I do that because three things happen when you do that. Number one, it takes, the, takes that conversation and makes it person to person. When people think they're talking to a computer, they can be really ugly compared to what they would actually say if they knew a person was listening and paying attention at the other end. Number two, it takes the fight offline. We're way too busy to be able to do anything online like that. And it lets everybody lurking and finding our business for the first time know that we actually care about what people say and we listen which people want to do business with people who listen they don't want to be ignored so you've got that and the third thing that happens is sometimes a bad review is just a complaint or a request in another format 
So now you can find something out and see if there's something that needs to be adjusted. I had that happen here in Midland. They didn't like the tacos. They did a picture of the plate. They didn't like it. They hated it. The owner reached out and said, that's not the experience I want for you. I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Please contact me here. And he put his phone number. They talked, they met, they made some adjustments. They took pictures together. He sent them with 10 free taco dinners. Don't you know that that person was going around town saying, I helped do that. He turned a potential enemy into an advocate by listening and being able to provide good service. And it all started with a negative review. So know that you have that opportunity too, but you need to listen. Now, the number one way you can listen, say thank you for a good review. 97% of businesses, which is to me staggering, 97% do not say thank you for a good review. If you want to be seen head and shoulders above everybody else, say thank you because businesses are not doing that. All right, let's see here. Um, please, can you say that again? Yes, absolutely. That's not the experience we want for you. I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Would you please contact me here? And then give them a link to con a here to go to, uh, a phone number, a text, a number to text, a link to your, um, your contact form, uh, WhatsApp, your messenger, wherever you have. Just make sure you have that so they have a way to contact you. Now, this is really true because I work with a lot of credit unions and banks and their Google business profile. And I have seen people in a complaint or in a bad review share their account number, their routing number and their password because they think the review is a private conversation. It is fully public. So do keep that in mind. You are keeping their privacy at my, in, in care and in mind. OK. All right. So now you can say thank you here. You can also manage reviews in this way. So these are some good tips on how to manage reviews. I would definitely take a look at this when you get a copy of today's recording in the slides. And then of course you can also receive messages here on your phone or if you use the desktop version, you can go here and look at messages. Or if you're in Google search, it also comes up that you can check messages to see if anybody's messaged you. Again, that opportunity of being the first to respond to them. And then of course, all of this can be accessed in the dashboard at the back end. So this is how you get to that back end dashboard. I'll move my pointer out of the way so you can screenshot that because the recording and the slides won't come for another 24 hours. So you might already wanna take action on this. As you look on the left side, just like any other Google tool, all the navigation happens on that left-hand side. If you wanna put special attributes, you know, Vincent, if you wanna say you're veteran-owned, veteran-led, if you've got accessibility that you wanna share with people, you can add that too. You can also add managers. Let me leave you with this last piece of advice. Never, ever, ever give your Google or your Gmail password away to anyone. If you've done that already, at the end of this, go change it now and give them access this way. You can add people as managers or as owners. You are always the primary owner, which means you can shut down and shut out the business. I've sat across from thousands of small businesses crying that they lost all their amazing reviews because they shared their password with someone, which to Google means that they have the keys to the kingdom just like you. We cannot tell the difference between who is the owner. You are always the primary owner. You can name somebody as an owner, which means they don't own it. They can't shut you down or shut you out or shut your business down, but they have the same kind of ability to move through. So a lot of people will do this with agencies. This is a lot of times what I'm working in is the owner status because it gives me the ability to work like the owner without shutting out the owner. Or you might want them to be manager, which means they can do almost everything that the owner can do, except they can't add people who can manage. Like they might have more people at the agency. They can't add them without asking the owner, the primary owner for this permission to do that. Make sense to everybody? I heard you uh, let's say, visit. how does Google view the confidentiality aspect of a client and psychotherapist regarding reviews? Um, yeah, so I would just say, oh, you know, I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy, because that can be your standard answer, Vincent, and it doesn't mean that that person's a client. It could be somebody that's just prospecting, and they want to find out a little bit more information, okay? So this is your next step. So what I'd love to hear now is what questions you have and what next steps you have. You will also see after this, there's more that you can do right here as far as actions. So what are you gonna add to your to-do list? Let me know in the question box because that does hold you accountable to that. And we are one minute before time. So I do wanna give a shout out to the Google partners who invited you today. And that is Score Austin. Bill, reach out to Bill if you've got any questions. Score Fort Worth, Jenny is there for you. Score Dallas, Tammy Joe is there for you. And Score San Antonio, 
reach out to Kelly, as well as REI Women's Business Center, Tulsa. Reach out to Leslie, okay? They are the Google partners that can answer your questions, but we are a minute before time. I will stop the recording now, even though in the slide deck, you'll see there are more resources that you'll have available to you here. I'm not gonna go over those resources because I do wanna make sure I answer questions. So I'm gonna stop the recording